See, we have reached that point of the offseason where teams, they got to make some tough decisions. Teams have to either start releasing some players so they can get under the cap, which is still cap. Uh, they have to think about extending some players, restructuring some contracts, or even trading some players away um, because they have to figure out how they can go into this upcoming offseason or going to the new league year under the cap and ready to attack and figure out ways to make their team better. But situations like these with Amari Cooper, who is expected uh, to be released by the Dallas Cowboys, it's not official yet. But one thing to think about, even with that, with him being expected to be released by the Cowboys, a lot of times you hear these reports where a player is expected to be released. This is and it can be a business move because it is a last resort by these teams when they put this information out there. It's a last resort by them to let other teams know like, hey, you want to give us an offer? You want to give us a draft pick or something? Maybe player for player. You want to give us something before you release this player? Let us know or else they're going to be on the open market for anybody to sign them. And we've seen it happen time and time again where a player is either expected to be released or it's even announced that they're released. But then the team will backtrack and be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They, they weren't actually released. We actually came to an agreement to trade that player to this team in exchange for a draft pick. We've seen it happen time and time again. But I think for this one, he'll actually be released because I don't see anybody taking on that contract, especially when they can offer one of their own in the next couple of days and whenever he is in the end up rele being released now something to think about uh when he is released whenever that time comes he doesn't have to wait for free agency to sign he can sign right away immediately like he, he don't gotta sit around oh i gotta wait till the middle of march to sign a new no nobody has to wait amari cooper is a veteran He's been around this guy, and it's crazy. He's been around since 2015. That don't even make sense. It don't even seem like it, because you look at his face, this dude looks so young. It's like, man, this dude, he's still a baby. No, he's been around since 2015. That is crazy, and he's been productive. Like, let's look at some of his numbers. In 2015, he had 72 catches for 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Follow that up, sophomore season, 83 catches for 1,100 yards and five touchdowns. Follow that up, uh, 2017, with the Raiders, he had 48 catches, seven uh, touched, uh, 48 catches, 680 yards, seven touchdowns. He only uh, played in 14 games that year. Uh, but then in 2018, um, he had 75 catches for 1,005 yards and seven touchdowns. Now, 725 of those yards came with the Cowboys after the trade, and 280 came with the Raiders before the trade. Um, and then he was like, all right, y'all gave up a first-round pick for me in, two, in 2018. Let me prove my worth. So 2019, he followed that up. 79 catches, 1,189 yards, eight touchdowns. 2020, 92 yards, 1,100, I mean, 92 catches, 1,100 yards, five touchdowns. And then this year, which is a down year, he did miss a couple of games. Uh, but he put up 68 catches, 865 yards, and eight touchdowns. So he is a very productive wide receiver. But the question is, should the Ravens, if and really when he's released by the Cowboys, should the Ravens sign one Amari Cooper? Now, me, I wouldn't be mad at it at all. I, I wouldn't be. Um, and he's from Florida, too. So, you know, like, he could fit right in with the boys from the crib. But... I wouldn't be mad at it at all, but I would just be concerned because with Amari Cooper, he would be coming into a situation where he knows that the passing game, it was taking steps to get there, but is it there yet? There's a lot of unknowns with the Ravens when it comes to the passing game. It's a lot of unknowns. And one thing that I, I often wonder about, and we'll have to wait and see till this, when the season starts to see if this actually happens. Now, while they were taking strides forward in the passing game last year, which we have to acknowledge. So shout out to Greg Roman. Shout out to Lamar Jackson. Shout out to the receivers, the tight ends, all that. They were taking steps forward in the, in the passing game last year. But were they only doing it because they were forced to due to the injuries at running back? Because they didn't have a running game like that. Like, the, the running game was Lamar Jackson, and that was it. 
Were they forced to take those steps in the passing game only because there was no J.K. Dobbins, there was no Gus Edwards, there wasn't even a Justice Hill? All those guys were out. So since they were out, did that make the Ravens be like, all right, hey, we got to throw that ball in. We can't run the ball, so we have to throw it. But now that you're going to be getting those guys back, and we would expect and hope that the offensive line is better. Will they still be a passing team? Not saying that they're going to completely eliminate the running game, but will the passing game still take those strides forward? Will they do that? That's to be determined. I hope that it does. And it ain't like you got to forget about the running game. The running game is definitely going to be better than it was last year. No doubt about it. <laughs> but what are they going to do moving forward? So Amari Cooper could look at the situation and be like, mm, no, that's not the team for me. Ravens could look at the situation and be like, mm, no, that's not the receiver for us. He's going to command a significant amount of money. And if we're going to pay somebody a significant amount of money, then it's not going to be a wide receiver, especially the one on the outside coming in. Oh, no, because that would force them to really use him. It would force them. And not that that would be a bad thing that they would use him because it wouldn't. But they would have to change. Their philosophy would have to change on offense. The way that they run that offense would have to be different. Now, I wouldn't be mad because that, that could open it up. That could open it up for the passing game, too. I mean, for the running game, too. You, like, think, oh, my goodness. Like, you think about that. Think about it. You come out with four receivers. Well, four receivers because Bateman, Mari Cooper, Hollywood, and Mark Andrews. And then you got your offensive line. Of course, you got Lamar. And then next to him, you got either J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards. Oof. That's like, ooh, that would be beautiful. It would be beautiful. I would not be mad if the Ravens signed him at all. But if the Ravens signed him, that would let us know, like, hey, okay, we, we really passing the ball. Because, again, you got to think about it. We talked about this yesterday. Any receivers that they picked, and I know, cause I know people are going to say, oh, man, if you sign Amari Cooper, what about Devin DuVernay? What about James Froche? What about Miles Boykin? What about Tylen Wallace? What about those other guys? What about Benjamin Victor on the practice squad? What about all those other guys? If you're a wide receiver selected by the Ravens in the draft and you were not picked in the first round, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for each and every Ravens receiver not picked in the first round because the odds are stacked against you. They are automatically stacked against you. I mean, it's hard enough making it in the first round as is as a wide receiver in this league. But especially like think about this, not even just based off of the Ravens and their draft selections after the first round at wide receiver, but based off of who they are. They are a run first team. They pride themselves on running the ball, not on passing. They pride themselves on running the ball. So you got to think like, man, oh, they already got Bateman. They already got Hollywood. So it's going to be enough, uh, enough limited chances as is. They got Mark Andrews. Oh, man. And then if they sign Amari Cooper, even if they don't sign Amari Cooper, whatever they do, because they something going to happen at wide receiver for these Ravens. Keep telling it again, first three rounds. First three rounds, Ravens are going to take a wide receiver. They're going to. But anyway, um, you got to think, like, in the back of your mind, even in the front of your mind, as a receiver by the Ravens not selected in the first round, you got to think, oh, man, like, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm grind. I'm going to push. I'm going to do everything. Because I've seen so many people saying, James Prochet, James Prochet, James Prochet. And I feel you. Oh, I'm with you all day. James Prochet should be out there more, should be involved more. He got hands. He, oh, yeah. But I don't expect it to happen. I don't. He's a, what, fifth, sixth round pick? Ravens, they, they oh, yeah, James Prochet, yeah, he's cool. Da, da, da. But they, they been whatever about him. They ain't like Miles Boykin, third round pick. Special teams. Devin Duvernay, he was a third round pick too. He been out there on the offense a lot more than the other guys. But he ain't really been a wide receiver. He's been a gadget guy. That's our kick returner. That's our punt returner. That's our uh, jet sweep king. Yeah, we'll throw him a couple catches every now and then. But 
Should we use him like they use him in college to what made him special? Nah, we ain't gonna do that. Should we use James Proche in college like what made him special? Nah, we ain't gonna. Should we use Tyler Wallace like what made him special? Nah, we ain't gonna do that. And I know you, you can't feature every single wide receiver every game. You can't do that. I understand that. And I'm not saying that. I'm not expecting there to be five different wide receivers on a team that all go for over 1,000 yards. No, that's not realistic. But when it comes to Ravens and these wide receivers that get drafted anywhere after the first round, it's bleak. So that they're not invested in them like that. But if you bring in an Amari Cooper, you didn't draft him. So oh, he ain't drafted. Okay, cool. But for all those other guys, I don't really think you I don't even really think their status would really even change with the Ravens. Because I, I don't feel like they even have a real status with the Ravens. And it's of course nothing against the players. That's just more so the team. That's that's the way that the team has been for the longest. It's been that way for such a long time. We went over the draft history yesterday. That any receiver that they draft after the first round, it's not looking good. Torrey Smith is the only one that made it out alive after the first round. Only one. Nobody else did. Nobody. Torrey Smith went on, played for the, the Eagles, helped them win the Super Bowl. He was a part of that. He played for the 49ers, of course, before then. And he did his thing over there a little bit, but that was it. And, oh, he played for the Panthers, too. So he played for three other teams. So shout out to Torrey Smith, man. Three other teams. Like, who, what, what Ravens receiver even played for one other team? Which one that the Ravens drafted? Which Ravens receiver? Tannen Doss, he signed with the Jaguars. and that, that, uh, Brashad Perryman, he was with the, the Browns and the, uh, the Bucks. And I think the Jets, too, for a little bit. Oh, and the Lions, I think, too. But um, what wide receiver drafted after the first round played for another team? Again, Tannen Doss with the Jaguars, but mm, did he really even play for the Jaguars like that? Think about it. Many receivers don't make it out alive past the Ravens. They really don't. And that's because when they're with the Ravens, they're not alive. Ravens kill them off. So with Amari Cooper, um, I again, I wouldn't mind. He's obviously a proven talent. He can make plays happen. And, and just thinking about that lineup again, you could have somebody for the deep pass. You could have somebody for the intermediate stuff to show us that you, you can have guys that can work all over the field. Again, Bateman, Hollywood, Amari Cooper, Mark Andrews. I don't expect the Ravens to sign him. Though. I, don't, they, I don't think they will. They won't. And he'll be able to get whatever the Ravens could offer him. They probably won't. But whatever they could offer him, he can get more elsewhere. He can get more somewhere else for sure. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see where he goes. It's going to be interesting like it always is. I, I love the NFL offseason. I love it. It's always so much fun. I love y'all too. I love y'all more than the NFL offseason. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great day. And just like Amari Cooper is going to be when it comes to being with the Cowboys very soon, we out.